Welcome to another video PowerPoint uh, from the Tennessee College of Applied Technology in Livingston. This one is on nuts and bolts. When we're identifying nuts and bolts, we usually have to identify whether they're metric or standard. There's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, one way is with size and pitch. We basically measure the diameter of the bolt and we look at the thread pitch and that tells us basically or gives us clues to whether it's a metric or a standard. There's also another way to tell if it's metric or standard. It's not always foolproof, but we can look at the head markings and that can give us a clue as whether it's a metric or a standard bolt. There's, when we're determining bolts, we basically look at uh, the bolt size, we look at three things. One of them is going to be diameter, which is the thickness of the bolt. The second one will be the thread pitch. And the third one will be the length or how long the bolt is. So those three things are how we describe a bolt when we talk about a bolt and want to describe uh, what type of bolt we're dealing with. If it's an SAE bolt, or a standard bolt as we call it, we use those three things, diameter, thread pitch, and length, uh, to describe the bolt. So when we write it, we usually write it in a form separated by X's, similar to what you see here. Diameter, X pitch, X length. So an example would be if we had a quarter inch diameter bolt and a 20 thread pitch and it was two and a half inches long, that's how we would write that. That would be a quarter by 20 by two and a half. So the three things we're going to use is our diameter our thread pitch, which is threads per inch, and then the overall length of the bolt. When we're talking about diameter of a bolt, I want to make sure you understand to measure from the outside of the threads. Um, a lot of students will use dial calipers and they'll use the sharp ends to go down in the thread grooves. You really need to get on top of the threads or the outside of the threads to tell the true diameter. So measuring inside may make you mistake a metric from a standard bolt. Also another thing to be aware of is it's not the size of the wrench head. So if we look at this hex head that you put a wrench on, a 3 8 bolt is going to have a much larger uh, head on it than a 3 8 uh, wrench would fit. So uh, if this were a 3 8 bolt it would probably have a 9 16 head on it and take a 9 16 wrench or 9 16 socket. So make sure that you use the diameter of the bolt not the size of the head. Second thing we use is the thread pitch or the threads per inch. <laughs> if you look this is one inch and down at the bottom you can see I've numbered in red the uh, different threads you see and in that one inch span you'll see there are 16 threads. Um, when we're talking about thread pitch you can see terms such as NC, National Coarse, or NF, National Fine. There's also BPT pipe thread and uh, NPT pipe thread and we will talk about those a little bit later. So lastly, the third thing that we need to determine when we're describing a bolt, uh, once we get the diameter and once we get the threads per inch, which in this case is 16, the third thing we have to get is the length. And that's just a measurement. We can measure it with a dial caliper. We can measure it with a tape measure. The more accurate way, of course, is a dial caliper. One thing that you don't want to make a mistake on is do not count the head. So when we're talking about length, we're talking about the length of the bolt from the underneath of the head to the very tip of the bolt. So if we look, it goes from underside of the head to the tip, and that will be our length. Do not include uh, this, the head of it, in the length. Some of these bolts won't have threads all the way up. You still go to the underside of the head on those and the total length from the underside of the head to the tip of the bolt will be your length. In this case, if we look at this bolt, it's 3 eighths in diameter, 
by 16 is the thread pitch and by one and a half is going to be our length so this is a three eighths excuse me a three eighths by 16 by one and a half bolt and that's how we write it uh, when we're performing tests or describing this bolt I'm going to try to let you go through with this bolt, see if you can figure out how it does. Remember, we have three things, diameter, pitch, and length. So the first thing will be the diameter. So if you can look at the picture on the right, you can kind of see what the diameter is, and you can put that in the first slot. So what do you think that is? If you said the quarter inch, it's right. <clears throat> the second thing we want to put is always our threads per inch. And if you look at the picture on the right and find the threads per inch, you'll see the number we put in that second space. And lastly, once we get the threads per inch, we have to come to the length. And the length is pretty obvious in this case. It's an inch and three quarters, so that would be our bolt uh, length. So we have a quarter twenty by one and three quarter inch length. Um, we may shorten that to a quarter twenty bolt if we're describing it. When we're talking about metric bolts, we do diameter the same way, we measure it the same way, we don't get in the thread grooves. We get on top of the threads or the outside of the threads. And the only difference is we're going to have a metric measurement instead of a fractional measurement. So in this case, if we measure it, the bolt's going to be eight millimeters. And uh, don't make the mistake, like I said, of getting in the middle of that and measuring between the threads. When we talk about thread pitch on a metric, it's a little bit different. Where standard was threads per inch, the metric is going to be um, the distance between each thread. So if you look, and I've kind of blown this up, you can see the distance from the top of one thread to the top of the next is 1.25. That means the thread pitch is 1.25, which means it's 1.25 millimeters between each thread. So if you look at this space, that means it's 1.25 millimeters, and that would be a metric thread pitch. Metric length is just like the... Uh, Standard length, we're going to measure from the underside of the head all the way to the tip. Remember, do not count the head or you'll be wrong. And it's going to be a metric uh, measurement in millimeters. So we would have it written down uh, in millimeters. So let's practice this. This is going to be the same three measurements we did on the standard bolt. Uh, the first one's going to be our diameter. If you look on the right and pick out the diameter. Yes, it was 10. And then the next thing we need is the thread pitch. So the thread pitch will go in the next space, and that will be 1.5. And lastly, we need the length. So can you pick the length out from the picture on the right? I'm sure you did, and it's 36. So this is a 10 millimeter by 1.5 by 36 millimeter bolt. So we may call it a 10 by 1 5 bolt, uh, but it's 36 millimeters long. How do you tell thread pitch is one of the hard things to figure out. Um, one of the easiest ways is with the thread pitch gauge. The thread pitch gauge is on the left. You can see it has little leafs that come out and they have patterns on them that correspond to thread pitches. If you look over here, you see that you set the thread gauge down on top of the threads and you find one that matches up perfectly or fits in each one of the thread grooves perfectly. Um, usually the leaf or the, the one you're using will have a measurement number on it that is the pitch. This case is 14, that means 14 threads per inch, that means this is a standard bolt. This is a metric thread pitch gauge, just wanted to show it to you. Um, you can see it has metric thread pitches, which is the distance between the threads. So this is one of my highlighters on is 1.25. That stands for 1.25 millimeters between each thread. 
Uh, if you look over here, this one is two millimeters per uh, between threads. That means between each of these threads is two millimeters in distance. When you're using the gauge, you just basically pull out the different leafs and you look. They have numbers on them, 20, 18. Um, these numbers correspond to the thread pitch, and of course, 20 and 18 are standard thread pitches. Uh, you set the gauge down on the threads, and if it fits in, you have identified the thread pitch. You can notice this one does not fit in. Uh, so this is definitely not an 18 thread pitch uh, part, whatever this threaded part is. Over on the left, you can kind of see 16 uh, is on this gauge. And notice how it fits very nicely down in the threads. This is a match for this. That means that this bolt is a 16 thread per inch bolt. One thing you have to be real careful with is putting the gauge down in the threads. Make sure it fits. Some metric and some standard are really, really close. And I want to repeat that. Some metric and standard thread pitches are really close. So when you're comparing it, make sure you pick the right one. At the top, you can see how this one does not match up real well. It actually fits in the holes and the threads, but notice how it's touching on this side. It's got a gap, and eventually it comes to the other side to where it's butting up. So this one actually doesn't fit good. If you look down at the bottom, you'll see how good this one fits. It fits right down in the middle, uh, so this gauge would be a perfect match for this bolt, and you would look at the gauge to see what's stamped on it, and that would be your thread pitch. Bolt head markings. This was the second way we said we could identify bolts. And uh, it's not foolproof, but it's pretty close. Uh, and basically, head markings identify the strength of a bolt. So you need to know it's the strength of a bolt is on the head markings. If you look at standard or SAE, you'll see there are different grades grade 7, grade 5, grade 8. Um, all these different grades. Uh, correspond to the strength of the bolt. If we look at the metric bolts, you can see there are numbers. Much simpler process. You have 4.6, 5.8, 9.8. .8. Um, this tells the strength of the bolt. So if we look at this, we can tell this is a standard bolt because it has markings. If you remember from the previous slide, when it has markings like this, it's going to be a standard bolt. Um, a good way to tell the grade is to add 2 to the number of lines. So if you can remember that and add 2 to the number of lines that are on the bolt head, you'll be able to determine uh, the grade of the bolt. So when we're looking at this bolt on the left, um, we've got three marks. If we add 2 to that, the rule of 2, then it's going to be a grade 5. And if you look down at the bottom, I'll give you some common grades that you'll see. Two, five, or eight. Those are the most common grades you'll see in standard bolts. Here's some uh, more lines and bolts, just to give you an example. You can see on the left is a grade five with three lines. A grade eight has six lines. You notice that you add two, and that will tell you the grade. So if we add 2 to 3, we get a grade 5. If we add 2 to 8, we get a grade, or excuse me, 2 to 6, we get a grade 8. If there aren't any markings on the bolt, it's pretty much a crapshoot. Not all manufacturers' bolts have to put markings on them. Some have their own specific markings. So uh, if there's nothing on it, you really don't know. Um, there's a pretty good chance, though, it's a grade 2 or less. So let's do a little practice here. We got a bolt. It's got three marks on it. So what kind of grade is this bolt? And remember that rule of two. If you said grade five, you're exactly right. Which bolt is stronger? B is the much stronger bolt. Metric numbers, the strength is uh, in numbers. 
Uh, it uses sometimes a decimal between the digits like 8.8 .8 or 10.9. Not always, but it does. Sometimes it just leaves a little space. Uh, and again, the higher the number, the stronger the bolt, just like the standard bolts. These are some standard sizes or strengths of bolt uh, for metrics. 5.8, 8.8, 9.8, you'll all see these sizes on the ends of the bolts. Um, 8.8 is pretty common, 9.8, uh, all the way up to 12.9 we'll see in the automotive industry. So again, just like the standard, um, as you go up in numbers, you get stronger. So a 12.9 would be a much stronger bolt. So what grade is this bolt? It's not very hard when it's metric. It pretty much is simple. It's stamped on it. So the grade of this bolt would be a 10.9. What's the grade of this bolt? Well, you guessed it. It's pretty much stamped on it, so it's going to be a grade 8.8, .8, which tells you the strength of it. Now, we got three bolts in the picture on the left, uh, 4.6, a 8.8, .8, and a 10.9. So, which one of these three bolts is the stronger bolt? And if you go by the higher the number, the stronger uh, the bolt, naturally, C, which is the 10.9, that's the much stronger bolt of these three. Now, we told you the difference in metric markings and standard markings on the head of bolts, so can you tell by using that which one of these is a metric bolt? If you said the one on the right, B, you're correct. Remember, metric bolts will have numbers on them, standard bolts will have marks or slashes. Nut markings we'll touch on real quick because it's harder to see and not all nuts have them. Um, a quick way is a grade 5 has two marks that are 90 degrees apart and a grade 8 has two marks that are basically lined up with two points on a flat or with two adjacent flats which are side by side. So just think close together is a grade 8 Further apart is grade 5 when you're talking about nuts. So, with that in mind, closer together or further apart, is this a grade 5 or a grade 8 nut? If you said grade 8, you are correct. Notice how they're close together. What about this one? We have uh, actually one on a flat, and then there's a space, and then one on the next flat. So there's some space between those. Um, you guessed it, that's going to be a grade 5. So what about this one? Yep, grade 8. Metric nut markings are different. Uh, a lot of them have numbers on them, which makes it really easy, just like the head of the bolt. Uh, they do have, as you can see down on the bottom, uh, some markings that identify grades, and that makes it really difficult um, to keep up. You almost have to just look at the nut, look at a, um, a chart to see what grade is what. It's much easier when they have it numbered like they do 8 or 12 or whatever. So it makes it much easier to identify grades of bolts or nuts. And that's the end. Thank you for watching. And as always, follow us on Facebook, uh, TCAT Auto Tech. And this has been the Tennessee College of Applied Technologies Automotive Technology Program in Livingston, Tennessee. Thanks for watching.